Hi everyone, this is Toby from Toby Urban Sketch and today I'm just going to show you how I do some simple and expressive line work when I'm doing urban sketching. In this case obviously I'm at, at home and doing it from a reference photo but I use the same techniques when I'm wandering around whenever I'm doing something in my sketchbook. Um, if you enjoy my videos or you want to see more please do like and hit subscribe on my channel and of course um, Please leave any comments let me know if you enjoyed it or if there's anything else you'd like to see more of now let's get going so the what we're going to sketch today is called pigeon point lighthouse in california it was a uh, an instagram challenge i saw a, a few months ago now but the image i'm actually using is the one on the wikipedia page which i'll put a link to in the description for this video so you can you can draw along with me or after whatever you like the equipment I'll be using for the drawing is my Moleskin A5 portrait sketchbook. I have a little clip which I actually bought in Asda in the UK, um, just a, a normal supermarket, and I use that to, to hold back the pages to make life a little bit easier for myself. Got a few different pens. I anticipate mostly to use my Derwent Line Maker, which is a 0.1 millimeter pen. I've also got a Unipin 0.5 and a Windsor Newton 0.3. I get through them so quickly that I never get a chance to take the um, prices off before they run out or I've damaged the nib too much, I'm afraid. Um, so let's get started. Now I don't tend to do pencil first, I tend to just go for it. And I almost always start with a 0.1 millimeter pen. The ink in all of these is um, permanent, so after a few seconds, maybe half a minute if you've really gone for it, the ink's completely dry and then you can add your watercolour on. What I start with, so the scene we've got, we've got a, a lighthouse, a little house in front of it, and some cliffs falling off. And I'm trying to think in my head, where are the thirds of this page? So where do I want to place it? And with something like this, it's quite fun to have a quite dramatic sky. So normally what I do is I start near the top, just getting this out of the way so my sketchbook's flat, near the top of my main object of interest, which of course is the lighthouse. And I want it slightly off centre, so let's start here. And um, what have we got at the top? We've got a little ball, and then some circular shapes, and some more circular shapes, and then it comes down, and it hits the bottom here. We can draw in this whole cliff and bring it down to the sea and draw in just another line there. So what I've done, I've joined everything up. I, I went back up and down this because I wasn't happy. This was too vertical, so I went up and back down. It's fine. It's all going to add texture and interest by the end. Uh, if I wasn't talking, I'd probably have just kept going as well. Um, but because I'm talking, trying to explain what I'm doing, I had a little pause. So let's just get the other side of this lighthouse in now. And essentially it needs to mirror that first side. And then let's, get, let's place our house. Again, like, I know that the house, you can see the lighthouse through it. That's fine. I, I like doing that. I like having objects behind that you can sort of see through. That's the basic structure of the house, the lighthouse in. I've got some details we haven't looked at yet. I just want to explain what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get the, the big shapes in really loosely. You can see although this is a 0.1 millimeter pen, it, it's actually very bold compared to um, say this Winsor & Newton line maker which is a 0.3, but would, would actually give a line similar to that. So it's really important to know your the pens you're using. Now, what's the next step? I want to keep working on my, my most interesting objects, which is these two. And I want to get some of these key features of interest in, not accurately, but in an interesting way. So let's just extend that little spire at the top. And we'll add some lines which show there's little windows there and then there's a railing 
there's some sort of texture here as well and there's another railing and we can see the bottom of that uh, and then okay I really like linking things so we've got windows here I am just going to link the window across the whole of the lighthouse and it just it joins things together it makes things in a way simpler because you're not having to draw individual objects you're just adding texture to a, a grander thing now at the bottom this doesn't make sense because it's sort of floating on a pedestal and the reason is there's a little structure in front so if we just add that in and then we've got a sort of fence going around which comes in front of the house we can add that in that's a rock and if we just come and add lines which show the sort of perspective of these cliff faces and then in the front is greenery so we want to contrast that so what I've got here I've got these rock faces coming down these lines just show us the shape of the rocks they're sort of pointing up and then when there's greenery I want my lines just to really contrast what these harsh rocks are so that's why I like doing just circles and loose shapes and again everything's joined up and that just it really does simplify things and it helps the eye move between objects uh, rather than getting stuck somewhere and then having to jump somewhere else you just you end up following these lines around and the lines you'll notice get more and more bold as we move towards our point of interest so let's let's keep these sort of ideas in mind as we finish off the house here so we've got windows and windows are just little squares and sometimes we can add a bit of tone for things which are definitely going to be dark it's good to have a tiny bit of shape so we know these are essentially rectangles pointing up they're the chimney stacks so i give them three lines and that gives us two sides and the same with the the roof we can see the underside so it's got a couple of lines there it's a bit wonky but that's what makes it interesting to look at and i think literally we we could leave it there um that's an interesting sketch we can add some color it's done in about seven minutes including loads of waffling but what else can we do to, to just add a tiny bit more interest to the final sketch well there's a lot of blank space and if we put just watercolor there it will sort of draw away from this and just perhaps look a bit unbalanced so why don't we start by adding in our horizon line this is the water And then from there, we can just, these are really faint, I'm being, I'm being really quick, but where are the, where are the clouds? Like, let's get an, an impression of, of stuff going on in the sky. And there we go, that's done for now. Now, of course, the next thing is to see how we can make this really interesting by adding in some colour. Now I'm going to use a um, sort of one size fits all and she says large Caran d'Ache water, water pen, um, water brush sorry. Now I'm not going to pretend it's the highest quality brush in the world but it's the kind of thing that you can just carry around even if you don't have a pot of water uh, you can get a little bit of water in the, in the reservoir here and you can do something with it and that's what makes it an interesting thing to paint with now with this kind of pen work we're obviously going to go for loose and interesting colors so let's splash on plenty of water and then we can start making a few decisions about what colors we want to go for so although being expressive i still I still do like a blue sky so I'll just show you my palette quickly 
This is the, the palette I use both for urban sketching and for, for watercolour painting at the moment. A few blues, uh, reds, greens, quite simple, just 12 colours in there, and some white grass. For urban sketching I tend to use a very limited number of those colours. What I've got coming on my pen is a really loose, my, my pen, my brush sorry, is a really loose mix of uh, the cobalt blue I've got and a phthalo blue. And we're just going to start adding that to the sky, keeping everything moving and really watery. So I've added more water there. And initially, we'll outline that lighthouse and see what it looks like. The photo we're working off is a sort of dusk photo. So the softness to the blue sky is is sort of accurate to the idea of it. Now I want this sky to be quite big though so let's pop a load of water in there and if we add some red that will give us some sort of slightly neutralizing tones also some purples and we just keep this see how they're still really watery I'm just moving it and I'm, I'm mixing between the the red and the blue as we move the sky upwards if we almost frame the sky in in this red and then as we get down here get a bit of that sort of sunset color in and this is just exploring what looks what looks fun at the time to be honest there's no not being particularly clever what I'm doing here now I've got a decision to make do we like this hard edge of a sky I I I think it looks better like that so if I've just cleaned the brush off could leave some of these hard edges add a bit of water let things move around even more again let's just keep while things are moving just keep it going and the, the sea can become a continuum of that. Let's get a bit more blue. Okay. Now, like I said, it's really important to, to link things. So although I've, I've sort of tried to spare the lighthouse a lot so far, as we move, I, I want the colours to actually bleed along it a bit so particularly if we look at how the, the shadows work in the picture we've got shadows coming that side so let's let's start by adding the shadow and then purposefully bleed that shadow in here and and out the side so we don't just have a funny structure on its own it's a structure which is part of the whole image got this intense bit of blue let's bring it the other side and I've added blue to the shadow again to unify it a little bit now as the sky's drying it's becoming a lot less intense so I want it to be a bit more dramatic and uh, you can add splashes so I'm just picking up some of the colors I've mixed splashing them into the sky now see what happens and then we can join some of those up move them down, let them flow around the page a bit, bring them into the lighthouse and down and then let's keep these shadows going to give some shape below. Now what we have got is quite a bright bit of this, uh, call it greenery I think earlier, but the plants is quite bright and it's nice to marry up colours. We've got this this yellow here we've used in the sky it's really nice to, to just marry colours across so I'm going to bring a little bit of green as well but get that yellow as a prominent part okay. get splashes of yellow going throughout as well oh, that didn't work how I wanted it but it's fine because everything's nice and wet I can go in 
can cover up that little bit of green I didn't like with some tones, blue, move the blue around. No, we do, I think we do want a bit, bit more colour in these, these rocks. So I'm going to keep using our, our dark tone, which is a mix of um, uh, the, the, the red, the Scarlet Lake, and the Fallow Blue. And just bring some shadows linking. So here we go, the shadow links all the way around. And up, you see how everything is now linked. We do want to leave some of these whites as highlights on the page. But we want everything to be drawn, nothing standing out too much on its own, but yet everything leads you to where we want you to look. So what's what's missing at the moment are some real highlights on our point of interest which is here. Um, there's a couple of ways we can do that. Now that I think it's a little bit drier, we can get a bit more of the red. So the red I'm using is a Scarlet Lake. Make it a little brighter just by keeping it clean of the blue and bring out things like the roof. Can use it to to add a bit of value to the um, the shadows as well, and add it in there. There's sort of some rusty areas on the the lighthouse as well, so let's give that impression with this red. And you see, it's dry. I didn't want it completely dry, but it's a lot drier. So where I've put it, the colours are bleeding. So even though it's quite a bold new new intensity, I've added, and I'm going to keep adding bits of intensity. It's actually not, not too bold because it's just going to mellow itself out and paint itself into the environment that I've placed it. Get these nice reds in as well. Okay, what else can we add a bit more of? So we can go back to our, our dark. So to that intense uh, red Add some fallow blue. Now you can neutralize it down even more. Oh, so what I'm just doing is adding a little bit of um, burnt sienna as well, just to deepen the color. So now I've got a really dark color here. If I show you, it's still purple, but it's much darker, much more intense. Now we can use this to further enhance the areas which are really dark just with touches again it's going to paint itself remember so we just we don't want to add too much we need to touch it in and then see what happens so i touched it it's faded a bit i'll add a bit more the top of these chimneys can have a bit and then i'm just going to water it down a little so that i can come in here because what I want to do is bring out these areas where there's a contrast where the so these are each individual sort of cliff faces of the rock so I want to bring a real tonal contrast and then just bring it gently in and then re-emphasize our greens and our yellows a bit more of our yellow in here so the sky again is still slightly wet so by dropping in these colors I'm not leaving hard lines I'm just adding sort of visual interest, letting the colours paint themselves. Okay, so we're very almost there. We've been adding colour for about 10 minutes now. So the whole thing is taking about 20 minutes. So what we can do is just add even more interest, intrigue just with some colourful splashes. And I'm just using the the colours I've already used.
Trucking them in. And then a bit of yellow. And there we go. So we can we can let it dry. Take a few minutes, probably about 10 or 15 minutes even with the amount of water we've used and see what it looks like at that point. So here it is now that it's dried. I think we could leave it just as it is, but I'm going to just add a, a couple of little touch ups to just show what happens if we go on with some ink after. And what I've got is a, a Derwent, the, the point one I was using anyway before, the line maker pen. And I'm going to use this um, Pentel gel pen as well, which is a white pen. So what are we going to do? We just, we can go back over some of these black lines have lost a little bit of their vibrancy. And just by going over, again, if you just look really loosely, keeping everything joined up, we can reaffirm some of these relationships. We can add in these fence lines. This rock can become bolder. A couple of little trees and things in the background as well. And we can just bring our our rocks back into focus as well. And this just enables us to just get back that shape that we started with. And I think, to be honest, that's all that all that's needed. It's just what what we what, what well what I've done there is, like I said, embolden some of those lines which have faded behind the the translucent watercolour. I've gone where where the watercolour has gone over the lines, I can bring the watercolour back in by adding a different line. And I can just add in a couple of little details where maybe actually there's something more interesting I can add. And then the last thing is the gel pen. Now, I don't always do this, but sometimes, you know, when I remember or, or when I feel it's needed, I do. And we can just add these these highlights to a few places again just to show some more details which might otherwise get lost and to bring out reflections on windows and things like that or even little drops of white in the sea. I don't really want to do too much with this. Let's see where else makes a bit of sense. Maybe in these in this greenery just keep these smooth lines. And one thing what I'll do I'll, I'll add too much here show you what we can do about that. So I think the the highlights with the white pen need to be little drops or little lines. I think that they, they're quite effective in the sea here. But if you've gone too much you can go back in with your black pen and there we go you can literally narrow the white down again. Same here so if we, we wanted to get get the white to be more subtle you just go over it in the black pen and just narrow things in. Could even do it in the C here. And it just it just takes some what might be too broad, too broader white marks and can make them narrower. Now the last thing, the most important thing to do is always oh that white's just interfering with my ink pen there. Always just add a little signature. So people know it's yours. All right, and that is my sketch done. So this has been a, an ink and watercolour sketch in a really loose and expressive style of Pigeon Point Lighthouse. If you've enjoyed it, please please like and subscribe, like I said at the beginning, and check out the, the rest of my videos for more things that you might find interesting. Thanks for watching.